I want you to go with me right now. My good friend, Judy Jacobs, is uh, actually, I went over to the house and called her just run, nurse a little before we came out here to catch up with her. And she has a word for you about this very thing. So right now, watch and welcome Judy, my friend. Tell me this. I want to know this. One of my favorite things to talk about is, you know, I love to encourage these women in their faith. I love to encourage them in prayer because you've done that for me so many times when I was going through those tough places and you've been through your own places. Yes. And mm -hmm. so we preach, both of us preach from our experiences that we've walked through with God when we didn't know what we were going to do, especially in relation to our children or just believing God for things that looked impossible. But one of my favorite things that you've ever shared that so deeply impacted my life that I love to tell these women about, in fact, I just talked to them about it last week with them on the front porch, was your story about Until. Oh. I want you to tell them that story, Judy. Tell them you're the one that came up with that word from the Lord. It came out of your spirit. Tell them what happened and how you got that. So I come from a culture like you of prayer, church, fasting, the word. That is my whole life, even before I got here. So there's one thing that my mom taught me and uh, she taught me how to pray. And you know, my mom didn't just tell me to pray. My mom showed me to pray from a very young age. But I have seen those saints of God and I have seen the power there is in prayer. Yeah. My mom used to have um, prayer meetings, you know, every Tuesday night, my mom would have a prayer meeting in her house and women would come from all over the community and they didn't come, they didn't bring food. They didn't, there was no coffee. There was no, yeah. there was nothing. They came to pray and they would not leave. Nobody left until everybody prayed through. Nobody would leave. Love that. No television on. There was no nothing. Nobody was stirring everybody had to pray and so i grew up in that culture i knew what it meant and what it looked like mm -hmm. to pray through i knew what that meant so uh my my daughter our oldest daughter um kaylee who is so powerful she's getting ready to graduate from lee university and she is so powerful she wants to travel to the nations but she was about uh, eight years old when the spirit of fear hit her and it was a controlling fear it was a it was such a brazen spirit of fear that hit this baby um it was something like you know we couldn't she didn't want to go to school it just paralyzed her really it just paralyzed her and and jamie and i didn't know what to do we 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 prayed we anointed we had people praying uh we did we did fastings we planted seed we did everything we knew to do one morning i got up and as i i got up i would always go to my prayer uh prayer corner and i heard the lord say one word to me and it was until until and i knew what that word meant I went downstairs and I, uh, my husband was there and my, Erica was probably about uh, four years old and her, they were downstairs. And I said to my husband, God just spoke to me and I know what I'm supposed to do. And uh, he said, well, what is that? He, I said, I'm supposed to go on, on another fast. He says, well, great. Uh, I'll, I'll go with you because we always do things together. I said, well, you need to know before you you agree to that what the fast is going to be i said he said well what is that i said i'm going to fast until and he said until what until uh, the week until what what do you mean by that i said i am fasting until we get a breakthrough with this child i'm not putting another bite of food in my mouth until i see a breakthrough in this baby she would freeze she would be so terrorized with this with this spirit of fear she wouldn't she couldn't go to school she would come to me and she would say mom she says i i really want you to know how much i love you and dad but i probably won't live to see the morning i'll probably die in my sleep 
So would you just lay here with me? And that way I won't die alone. I mean, it, it, the spirit had her convinced that she's going to die. And then when she was awake, she was consumed with it. It was just a, it was just a consuming, uh, paralyzing fear. And I had had it. And see, sometimes you have to get to the point where you've had it. Come on, Judy. Before yes. you can move on. Yes. And we had had it. So my husband says, well, I'm with you. We're going to pray. So I said, I'm just telling you. And Karen, it was right in the middle. And you know what this is like. It was right in the middle of one of our busiest times on the calendar. Yeah. It was right in the middle of our busiest scheduling. It was stuff that, you know, was going on, going on, going on. And, but I was determined. I had a word from the Lord. And this is what I know. One word from God. One word. One word, Judy. One word. I had one word. That word was until. And I started on a fast. My husband started on the fast. Now, you know, when you when you go on a fast, you, you, you the first couple of three days is a total fast, is is uh is real challenging. It really is. After you get it past the first five or six uh, days, then it gets easier. I was so determined. I was so, I, I had set my face like Flynn, if you will, and I was determined that this thing was not going to, to, to have control of my daughter any longer. And I would get before the face of God and I would pray. And then, no, we couldn't leave her. So um, one of us had to be there. So I would have to get on the bus and I would take a couple of staff people and my husband would stay there. And he would tell me, you've got to eat something. You got to go on stage. You got to do this. You got, I'm, not, I'm like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast until that was my word. Right. That was my word. So I did that and we kept praying. We kept fasting. One day I was up in my prayer, prayer area and the Lord said, can you shout before you see it? Can you shout and give me praise before you, in other words, can you do it in faith before it comes to sight? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is a convincing proof of things not seen. Right. And I said, yes, Lord, I can, I can, I can shout. And at this point, I am so weak. I said, Lord, but you're going to have to help me. And so I'm telling you, when I made up my mind, to get up off, because I was prostrate on the floor. I was prostrate. By this time, I am prostrate. It was like when I would go on stage, the strength of God would come. I come off the stage, and I am just, just totally exhausted. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes, I do. Ever been there? You ever had that t-shirt? And so I was totally on the floor. The moment that I got on my feet, I knew. I said, Lord, today is going to be the breakthrough. I feel it. And there's something inside of you. Whenever you have done all you know to do oh, yeah. and keep standing, you're going to know something is getting ready to happen. There's something in your knower that says, God's about to shift this thing. Oh, yeah. God's about to turn this thing around. I knew the moment that I stepped up on my feet when God said, can you shout before you see it? Can you bless me and praise me before you see it? I got up on my feet and I thought, well, I'm on my feet. I might as well start moving around a little bit. And I started walking around in my bedroom and I had my hands lifted up and I was worshiping. And I'm going to tell you some, something right now. I wasn't feeling nothing except I was thinking I, I am so weak. I I'm just so weak. But the more the praise, as I begin to magnify God, as I begin to worship and to praise God, the strength of God came up inside of me. Whenever I finished, I was sweating to the highest heaven, running up and down the stairs. I told my husband, I said, she's coming home from school today, and it's going to be different. It's going to be different today. So she, she he, my husband said, well, I'm about to go get her. I said, well, well when, you, when, you, when she gets in the car, you're going to ask her, how was your day today, KK? And she's going to say, Dad, I had a good day. <laughs> and we hadn't heard that. And let me tell you something, months and months and months and months. And so when he went to pick her up, he, she got in the car and she said, he said, KK, how was your day? She said, dad, 
I really had a good day. <laughs> and by the time she got home, we all had church. Come on, Jesus. And I'm telling you, things begin to change and begin to shift. Then God touched that little girl. She went to, to, uh, she went to kids ramp. She got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And the rest is history. The rest is history. I'm telling you, there is a power with your until. That's right. There is a power with your, with your perseverance, with your, your tenacity that says, I'm not moving for where I am not moving from what God said. That's right. I'm not moving from what I believe. I know in whom I have believed and I am fully persuaded. Right. That he right. is able to keep that which I have committed in him. 